uh, to the next item on the agenda, as I mentioned earlier, uh, our team is divided into four sub-teams, uh, if you will, uh, to address various problems. Uh, today, we will, as I mentioned, hear from two of them. The first will be the one that's been dealing with the issue of uh, access to LEO, which is a major cost driver, uh, has a lot of complexities, and uh, that uh, group uh, uh, has not had a chance to debrief all of us, so the, you will be hearing along with us for the first time uh, the findings of that group, and we'll be talking about it. Uh, Bo is going to make the presentation. Bo, you may want to use the uh, podium so you don't have to keep your finger on this darn microphone the whole time. And uh, I, I probably should caution you about uh, Bo, those of you who don't know him, uh, he tends to be uh, very subtle, so you'll have to look for nuances in what he says. <laughs> Boa, you're up. Qualities. Thank you very much. Does this mic work? Can you hear me? <laughs> but I began my career in aerospace business in Huntsville, believe it or not. I was a Rockwell guy assigned to... Sorry, they're not turned on. There you go. How is this? Is this better? Yeah, I, I began my career here in, in, in on ground, mated ground vibration te test of the space shuttle. And, and I remember I was from uh, a new engineer in the aerospace business, and I, for the first time I experienced the hospitality and warmth of Huntsville people. And I was working on a program that was questioned. Shuttle was questioned. The value was questioned. Is this the right cause for America? And you know, in retrospect, now that I'm 69 years of age and I look back when I was a young guy working on a program, I feel privileged that I was working on a program that was actually finished. That the country had enough stamina and, and, and was willing to fund this program and see it to its conclusion. Shuttle is not the perfect solution for anything. But you know, we took it on, we finished it, we proved it to ourselves and to others that we Americans can do something difficult and do it well. And I hope whatever we come out in the future that we will have a chance to finish something. But going back to what I'm really supposed to be doing here is briefing you on the LEO access. As Norm mentioned, we were divided into those groups. Sally actually briefed yesterday her portion, which is has to do with flying out shuttle and with addressing the issue of the International Space Station. I will talk to you about LEO access, and of course, uh, General Lyles will talk to you about the international and integration arena, and tomorrow, Ed Crawley is going to address beyond LEO. And if you look at this d uh, division, it maybe is not all that perfect, but it was trying to get these chores to a manageable level but you can also see that they all need to be integrated between them. You cannot do LEO access without addressing beyond LEO. You can do LEO access without addressing station and shuttle questions. So we are, and we are in the process of actually doing this integration. Because you can't really pick, you can fall in love with a launch vehicle and you shouldn't really optimize a launch vehicle because that launch vehicle has to be driven by what Sally and Ed feel in terms of their scenarios. So what you will see today is how far we got so far and that job isn't finished because there is still that element of integration between the other two teams. So let's see, how do I change charts here? I'm sure there is a, something I press. Okay, a little bit about our charter. We were to examine and evaluate existing and proposed, 
and some of us called it affectionately paper systems, uh, of course, including ARIES 1 and ARIES 5, and propose best support to the beyond LEO and ISS and uh, sub teams. And I'm stressing that thing because you, you, you try to match a launch vehicle to what its need is. You don't look at the launch vehicle and select it because of on its on individual virtues. And this shows the membership of our sub team. Myself, Dr. Sally Wright, and Dr. Dr. Wanda Austin, and Dr. Ed Crowley. I'm the only guy who was too lazy to get a PhD, as you can see from this chart. OK, so our approach has been to identify the broad range of these government and commercial uh, launch vehicles. And we, to, make it, to make the chore sort of a little bit organized, we have, and I'll show you how we have done it, we have segregated it into the classes by, by their launch capability. And, uh, and we have received a lot of briefings. I mean, we have received briefing from, uh, from the Constellation folks, from other NASA entities, from out from industry. There are a lot of proponents of their sisters, systems. And, uh, and of course, we had received a whole bunch of briefings uh, about Constellation, and some of us call it program of record. So we have, so we, so, and it was uh, part of the management job was to manage all the information that we receive and sort out things that we, what of them, are, how, how believable they are, how uh, credible they are, and to help us with that chore, we have asked Aerospace to provide us some technical evaluation because we have a short time to do this and there is a lot of data to look at and we don't have staff. This is it. Commission is right. You, you see us here plus few people who, who help us move around and set up these meetings. So we have asked Aerospace to provide us independent evaluation and for me personally it was very important to do it in a level playing field. Use the same criteria we, I was party to setting the criteria to make sure that like everybody gets fair shake with, when we start looking at these uh, alternate systems. Uh, we have also asked in, uh, to aerospace to provide an evaluation, independent evaluation of, of Constellation. And you, you can see the logic for that. It would not be appropriate to ask NASA to give me an independent evaluation of your own work. So we, we went to aerospace, they are credible, they, are do, they do this, by the way, all the time for NASA as well as DOD. Uh, so with, armed with, this, with these briefings that we received from industry, with the help from our friends at aerospace, uh, what we have to, ahead of us is, is to take a look, and we are in the process of doing this, take the scenarios that developed by Dr. Crawley and Dr. Ride and see how we can match, uh, match these launch vehicles that we have uh, identified with those scenarios. And, and so, we have, so we are, uh, we, we are, to, we are using the, uh, all the data, and my, believe me, I have a stack of data which is probably four or five feet tall. I don't think I'll ever uh, go, look, go through all of that. But we try to get to what is, what is of substance. We will apply results from aerospace independent evaluation. We have to consider the NASA budget constraints. And of course, safety and human rating will be an important driver. So I'm just trying to present to you a little bit of a logic of how we are going to arrive at, at uh, proposing the launch vehicle which will best match the scenarios that uh, Sally and Ed will come uh, coming up with. And we will try to favor uh, systems that encourage commercial and international participations, particularly with those that end with a mission to low, to low Earth orbit, either ISS or other low Earth orbit. We feel, you know, NASA has been doing some wonderful things for a long time. NASA is good at it. We, it's, I personally feel that NASA should relinquish some of those uh, tasks which, which industry can do, open the door, to the newcomers. NASA has opened the door to via COTS program. They should do more of that and allow the newcomers come and do some of these chores 
chores that NASA doesn't have to do because NASA has done it over and over and have NASA sites turn to more lofty goals like going returning to the moon, going to Mars, going to other uh, uh, heavenly objects. So we will try to uh, pr promote a little bit of this uh, additional participation by commercial. And when we are through with this integration using these criteria, we will be pre I will be prepared to, uh, to present recommendation of the launch vehicle selection that best fit their scenarios in the uh, DC open meeting that is coming up. Yeah, that should just show you a little bit of, of these classes of launch vehicle. You can see that uh, we were not discriminating, you know, from little t tiny rockets to your Ares 5, and those are, by the way, numbers of equivalent capability to low Earth orbit. And you can see uh, that there is a huge range of things. And you know, one thing that I've learned over my lengthy, rather, rather lengthy career, try to find the right tool for, you, for, the, for the job. If you want to do something, uh, you know, to, uh, between the uh, surface of Earth and LEO, you have a different launch of, a set of launch vehicles to look at. If you do a massive trip ahead of you, maybe you want a bigger vehicle. So this, is, uh, this shows the broad range of things to, to select from. This is a little bit about logic, how, you know, committee has set of goals. They are very broad, broad uh, goals. And you can see the two teams, the Sally's on the left and Ed's on the right. And, and those two people and their team will select the scenarios that fit the overall goals. My job is to take their scenarios and this dashed line essentially, I, and I call it filters because I wasn't sure how else to call it, but it's a means of of segregating uh, or, or picking the best launch vehicles that match those scenarios. And again, we will use the briefings that we have received, uh, aerospace evaluation results, and our own judgment. And judgment is important here because, you know, you hear people's briefing and sometimes you have to put your own uh, little filter on it. And by the way, we are, not on this committee, I hope, only for our, from our, because of our good looks. So hopefully we bring something that we can call judgment, you know. Uh, so, so that's, and what I'll do now, I'll turn it over to my colleague from aerospace, Gary Pulliam. I can't see because lights are in, in my eyes. He's here. And he's to walk you through a couple of their products. One was this launch system independent evaluation. We look at a broad range of the systems from, from Ares 1, Ares 5 to Little Taurus and, and, and uh, using the presentation that we have received and data that they have received from these, you know, uh, promoters of these systems, he will give you independent uh, approach how we arrived, uh, arriving at this independent evaluation. He will also give you the cost schedule and technical evaluation of, of Constellation. And I'll come back a little later and wrap it up. So Gary, let me turn it over to you.